How's it going, everyone? We are here to review tight ends for FanDuel. I no longer sound like a a formerly pregnant woman who's a smoker. I now more sound like just a guy with a cold, which I am. You know, I guess I should put my hood up. Board, right, dude? You look like more Michael Phelps preparing for a race. Right, right, bro, dude. Yeah, let's go to the skate park, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hear me <laughs> out. Uh, tight end this week, below average, yes? Yes, yes. correct. It certainly is. Probably don't want to invest all your monies in uh fan duel tight end this week i'm just gonna say that uh in in general what's your feel for what range you want to pay in i guess to start things off i think in about 70 percent of my lineups i'm looking to pay down into the artelius bennett jared cook range yeah I, i'm with you there dude and uh you know maybe we can like since we agree dude like and we've been like talking a lot lately and we agree on a lot of stuff dude maybe we should like go shotgun a beer behind the uh <laughs> you know behind the skate park dude like there's no cops there you know what i'm saying yeah like, i mean we're both after to 21, after 15 after fourth period dude we can just like sneak out there is all i'm saying <laughs> dude um so in Travis Kelsey, obviously, you know, the most prolific of the receiving options on the slate, at least in the regular season. Jeremy Macklin back now. Pittsburgh uh, on the road. Kansas City might be able to control this game. What are you looking at for Kelsey at 7,100? He's just solely a guy who I feel like if you're building 10 lineups, you toss him in two or three. Like, I just look, I think the price tag is way too expensive for me. Um, I like him this week, but like I'm also like a lot of other guys, like move him over to wide receiver and Devontae mm-hmm. Adams is only 300 more. Edelman is a hundred dollars cheaper. Randall Cobb's cheaper. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys you can take shots and I just feel better about um, within a, a relatively similar price range. So with that being said, I mean, you don't need to go up to Kelsey um i think you can kind of stick down to a range that we'll talk about in a little bit but definitely not a bad play uh i'm just kind of bullish on that game and how it's going to go like i don't know if it's going to be incredibly high scoring on either side (sighs) sorry i was i had to snort an ibuprofen real quick uh so you you brought it to wide receivers for a second i will say the this is the ultimate like mid range pain in the butt receiver slate. Like Tyreek Hill, Cole Beasley, Taylor Gabriel. These are the guys that have been haunting me. Chris Hogan, Muhammad Sanu. These guys have been haunting me all season with their random big games, especially that Taylor Gabriel stretch. That was not a fun stretch for me. I did not enjoy him doing that every week. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned the mid tier guys, Des Bryant, uh, Devonte Adams, you know, sort of in that same range as Kelsey. So tough to make the choice of Kelsey over those two. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely with you there. Jimmy Graham, 300 cheaper, uh, at Atlanta, you know, should be a golden opportunity for Graham. Uh, what's your take here? It should be. I mean, like everything really sets up on paper. Like you love the matchup and and you love the possibility that, you know, Seattle could go in on the road and and do some damage against this defense that has been, you know, I I think good for their circumstances. But Jimmy Graham just has not been a consistent guy. Like you you can plug him in this week. I don't mind stacking him with Wilson. I can't roll myself solo and use him otherwise. Um, just because I just don't like that price. You know, if he was lower 6K, um, 62, 6,100, then I'd be okay with it. But for me, I just feel like I'd rather use Kelsey um, and, or just kind of pay down because I think you can also move him over to that wide receiver range and just feel yeah. comfortable using Hammer. those guys instead. And, I mean, I guess you could – the only way you could fit, like, Adams, Des Bryant in a Jimmy Graham or Travis Kelsey lineup is probably if you pay down at running back, a.k.a. fading Le'Veon Bell, a.k.a. losing money tactics, a.k.a. not fun. So, 
uh, yeah, I'm with you there. Martellus Bennett, 59. Uh, Jared Cook, 54. Kind of that interesting tier uh, that I think we're both kind of in on. Uh, what are you looking at there? So Bennett, obviously, um, we were talking about in your pod, it's just a big team total there for New England. It's going to be a matter of deciphering the code of trying to get touchdowns out of those guys for fantasy production. I like Bennett this week. I mean, uh, three touchdowns in the last four games to end the year when he was healthy. Um, he's second to Edelman in red zone targets. It's not a significant difference. Those two do get a lot of looks inside the red zone. Um, it's not a good matchup on paper. Um, you look at Houston's second against tight ends for football outsiders, but I, I just look games against New England. I just feel like I throw them out the window because their offense is just so efficient that – it doesn't matter. Like it, it really doesn't matter. And especially on a four game slate, if this was eight games, nine games, we wouldn't even be looking at Bennett, but four games, I think you can look at him as kind mm-hmm. of a reasonable option. That's, that's a great point. We would not be, um, I mean, he had some fun moments early in the year, but really it is just, a. a, a I, I can't even think of a word to describe what they are. I wanted to say like a mismatch, but I don't, I don't think that's correct. A hodgepodge. A hodgepodge. I don't know if that's – that's better. That's an improvement. <laughs> on, that's the slight – you know how like each iPhone gets slightly better? You just made like the slight – like you made the emojis better on my version. We're just going to go with that and maybe release something <laughs> better next year or something. Uh, Jason Witten at 4,900, not – quite as appealing on FanDuel, but um, I mean, this kind of makes him a little more intriguing, right? Yeah, on DraftKings, you mean. Not as appealing on DraftKings. More appealing here yeah. on FanDuel. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what 40, I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. 4900 I mean, $500 down from Jared Cook. A little bit of a difference there. Um, I, hard to trust. I, I In terms of upside, it's not really there. I mean, his only real big outbreak was against the Browns this season. Other than that, he's been really mediocre. Doesn't get into double digit points often. Um, I, I don't mind him this week if you need somehow need that extra five hundred dollars, which I'm sure you can might because that can upgrade you to like a Des Bryant or something like that, or upgrade you a quarterback. You know, but other than that, I, I kind of feel like Jared Cook just takes that range for me. I like him a lot this week. And I guess I'll ask you a next year type question. It seems like they like Jared Cook in Green Bay now. I I think so. like he's fun. Like it, you you I pointed like out. He I mean, their offense really well. You know, he he does. Like I I mean I look I like his targets over the last few weeks. I mean nine eight five and eight. Yeah. Jordy Nelson likely being out. Like that's a ton of red zone targets up for grabs. Yeah. And I know like Adams and Cobb are obviously going to suck some of those away, but. Jared Cook, man, I like him a lot this week. I think, obviously, great matchup. For me, it's the best matchup on the board against Dallas, who really haven't been good against tight ends all season long. I agree. And at 5,400, I mean, that's a really reasonable price for him. Uh, yeah, I, He's like a pretty good player. Like He's good at what he does, you know? Kind of like uh, I was talking about on DK. Just super fast for a tight end. And his hands aren't as bad as we all joked about when he was in St. Louis. I mean, that's just... That's what happens when you're on the Rams. You just look terrible. And you you um, talked about like him being put into low percentage plays, which looking through his numbers, I mean, he's only catching about half of his targets. And if you're watching these Packers games, they're not optimal passing situations to cook. But if he's going to get me seven points with a chance at like a huge breakout play yes. on one of those, I'm going to take Absolutely. it right now. I feel like his floor right now is seven, and, and that's fine with me on this slate. Absolutely. And for 5,400 just in general this year, I mean, if you're getting eight, seven or eight on D or on FanDuel, I mean, it's really not killing you and it didn't kill you this year. Um, cause tight end stinks, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, is there anything else you want to throw in here? Maybe a Levine toy Lolo or, uh, Steven Anderson or DJ Ty Alevia? Now, Any interest in him? What are the odds about Luke Wilson probably getting a touchdown and Graham getting four targets again? Oh, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. probably well, happening. realistically, realistically, about seventy-eight percent. I'd say that's happening. Yeah, 
It just, it, it, yeah. you, you tossed out one of those weird ones where, you know, I forgot who it was, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm getting a touchdown. Austin Hooper. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is my. Oh, the, no. The Luke Wilson's actually like, I feel like that's reasonable. Like, that's probably going to happen. And then, like, they go for two, and you're like, oh, maybe Jim Graham can get this. And then it's going to go to Wilson again. And you're like, oh, is that Graham? No, it's Wilson. Yeah. It, it's, that's it's just how it's going to be. <laughs> um, as always, if you want to check out Jason's article, head over to dailyfantasycafe.com. Uh, if you like this video, certainly like and subscribe so I can get more. Uh, over-the-counter uh, pills to snort and behind the skate park. And, uh, yeah, so good luck this week, guys.